Want to master grammar so you can speak properly, express yourself better, and understand more? In this video, I'll show you how to master grammar with our lessons and learning program. Let's begin! Number one, listen to the lesson conversations and explanations. In every lesson, you learn a conversation. Then, our teachers break down every word and grammar rule. So you're actually learning grammar rules in the context of conversations, and you can easily see how they're used. Once you're done, review the conversation again and again to remember what you've learned. Number two, read the bonus explanations and tutorials. With the lesson notes, you get extra grammar explanations and examples that are not presented in the lesson. After you're done with the lesson, read the lesson notes for extra review. You can even save them as PDFs so that you can access them anytime. Number three, leave a comment on the lesson. Once you've learned a grammar point, be sure to use it. Leave a comment in the comment section. Write some example sentences for practice. Our teachers will review your comment and give you feedback. Number four, unlock even more grammar lessons. If you want to find all of the grammar lessons available, visit our lesson library. Under category, choose grammar. You'll get all of the pathways and lessons dedicated to helping you learn and master sentence patterns and grammar points. So, if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds, and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Welcome to Introduction to Japanese. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Risa. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Japanese grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. Consider the English sentence, I ate an apple. But first, let's remove the article an here for simplicity, so we're just left with, I ate apple. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. If we break down the English sentence, I ate apple, we can see that the subject, I, is presented first, followed by the verb, ate, and then finally the object, apple, is positioned last. This is the basic word order for sentences in English. Now, let's compare the same sentence, I ate an apple, in Japanese. Like before, Let's remove the particles to keep it simple. So we're just left with the words. If we break down the Japanese sentence, we get the subject, watashi, meaning I. Then comes the object, lingo, meaning apple. And finally, we have the verb, tabemashita, meaning ate. The word order for Japanese then is subject, object, verb, or SOB for short. In both languages, the subject is presented first. In English, though, it's followed by the verb and then the object, compared to the object being first and the verb last in Japanese. The same sentence in Japanese is essentially I, apple, ate, subject first, then object, and verb last, SOV. This is the basic word order for sentences in Japanese. Okay, let's move on to the next section. English is what is called a subject prominent language. This simply means that the subject is slightly more important than other components in the sentence. It's the key piece of information other components in the sentence relate to. Who is doing the action is slightly more important than what is being done or which object it's being done to in English. If we had to slowly remove pieces of information from a sentence while trying to keep its essence intact, logically we would do so in order of least important to most important. If we were to omit the subject, we would get ate an apple, which sounds strange. On the other hand, if we were to omit the object instead, the sentence would become I ate. Even though in each instance we omitted a piece of information, the reason I ate sounds less strange is because we've yet to break any grammatical rules, and so there's still potential for the sentence fragment to become a complete sentence and to become grammatically correct. Since the latter is logical, this indicates that the subject is more important than the object in English. The same would have been true if we had omitted the verb. Since the subject is the integral component in the sentence, this makes English a subject-prominent language. Japanese, on the other hand, is a topic-prominent language. 
Unlike English, the focus of each Japanese sentence is the topic, not the subject. Essentially, the eight an apple portion, Lingo wo tabemashita, is the main focus of the sentence, where I is deemed less important and can be omitted. In fact, if it's obvious what the subject is, or if it's already been established, it's quite normal to omit the subject from the conversation altogether in Japanese. Let's look at this aspect in a bit more detail. More often than not, if you wanted to say, I ate an apple in Japanese, you would not say, Watashi ga ringo wo tabemashita. Instead, you would more likely say, Apple ate in Japanese. Ringo wo tabemashita. Since Japanese is a topic prominent language, the information to be shared is the act of eating the apple. Less important is the subject, which is omitted altogether. Most Japanese sentences are constructed and spoken like this in real life. In most situations, such as a one on one conversation, it's clear that the person who's speaking is the subject. In cases where it's obvious who or what the subject is, it's almost guaranteed that the subject will be omitted. And so you're left with. Lingo wo tabemashita. On the other hand, when it's unclear who or what the subject is, or if you wanted to place emphasis on the subject, like if you wanted to declare from a group of people that it was you who ate the apple, then you would include the subject. Watashi ga ringo wo tabemashita. But more often than not, most sentences spoken in daily Japanese conversation can be spoken without including the subject at all, particularly if that subject is you. Hako wo akemashita. Densha de kaerimashita. Knowing this, we can easily express any simple action in Japanese using just the object and the verb. Try to create the sentence, I ate a hot dog, from these sets of words. Tabemashita. Hot dog. Wo. Okay, got it? The object goes first, so let's put hot dog here. And the verb goes last, so let's put ate at the end. Finally, we connect them using the appropriate particle. And that's it. Hotdog wo tabemashita. Which means, I ate a hot dog in Japanese. Hotdog wo tabemashita. You can create any basic sentence like this in Japanese if you simply know the word for the object and the verb in Japanese. Well done! Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Japanese sentences are formed using a subject object verb, or SOV, word order. The most important aspect of Japanese sentences is not the subject of the sentence, but the topic. Most sentences spoken in Japanese will not actually contain a subject, especially if that subject is obvious, like when it's yourself, the speaker. And lastly, you can create basic sentences in Japanese by putting the object first and the verb last. We've covered only the very basics of Japanese grammar. If you're interested in learning more, check out our Learn Basic Japanese video series. In that course, we teach you useful phrases while covering the fundamentals of Japanese grammar. In the next lesson, we'll introduce you to the basics of Japanese writing. See you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye! Want to speak real Japanese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at JapanesePod101.com. Hi everyone, I'm Motoko. Today I'm going to talk in about the usage of tai desu, meaning I want to do something. Do you want to go to Japan? Do you have anything you want to do in Japan? Can you say that in Japanese? After this lesson, you can say that in Japanese. So I'm going to talk about the sentence pattern with tai desu and then some example here. So let's go. So first sentence is Watashi wa sushi wo tabemasu, meaning I eat sushi. Let's break it down. Watashi means I, wa is topic marking particle, and sushi is the Japanese traditional food, o is object marking particle, and then tabemasu means eat in mass form. So to change this form into I want to do, we need to get rid of this mass and add tie this instead. So we get the new sentence here. Watashi wa sushi ga tabetai desu, meaning I want to eat sushi. So we have three points to use this tai desu form. First one is, of course, you need to use tai desu at the end. Second point is, you need to get rid of mas from mas form of verb 
and put the rest of the verb before Titus. And the third is this object marking particle O replace it into uh, replace O with ga. So ga become object marker in this sentence. So with Titus sentence pattern, we have one exception. So this Titus is only used for my desire, not someone's desire, my desire. So the subject or topic is always watashi. Okay, let's move on to the examples. The first one is, I want to drink matcha green tea. Watashi wa matcha ga something desu. So let's break it down. Watashi means I, and then wa means topic marking particle. And matcha means grounded green tea. You know the matcha as a tea ceremony. And then object marking particle ga. So the missing part is to drink. So to drink is nomimas in Japanese. So can you find nomimas from here? Hmm. Here. So um, according to the second point, we need to get rid of mas and then ado tai. So you will get nomitai desu. All together. Watashi wa matcha wa nomitai desu. I want to drink matcha green tea. Second, I want to look at shrines. Watashi wa jinja ga something desu. So watashi wa is the same part. Jinja means shrine. So shrine is the building for Shintoism and then Shintoism is the one of the common religion in Japan. So the missing part is looking at. So looking at is Mimas in Japanese. So can you find mimas here? Hmm. Here. So the same rule. Get rid of mas and add type. So you get mitai desu. All together. Watashi wa jinja ga mitai desu. I want to look at shrines. The third one. Hmm. For adult. I want to drink sake rice wine. Watashi wa osake ga something desu. So watashi wa is the same part. Osake is usually translated as rice wine or as just sake. So it's one of the Japanese alcohol made of rice. It tastes sweet but really strong. Not really strong. So the missing part is to drink. Oh, do you think it's familiar? Yes, we have here. So get rid of mas and then add tai so you can get nomitai desu all together. Watashi wa osake ga nomitai desu. I want to drink sake. For your information, in Japan, you can drink alcohol, but you should be 20 years old or older. The fourth one, I want to do ski. Watashi wa ski ga something desu. Watashi wa I. Ski means skiing. Object marking particle. And the missing part is do. So in Japanese, to ski is ski o shimasu. So the shimasu is the verb. So can you find shimasu here? Hmm. Maybe this one. So get rid of mas and then get tie here. So you get shitai desu all together. Watashi wa ski ga shitai desu. So in Japan, Hokkaido's Niseko is really famous for skiing. So the second last one, I want to go to Japan. That's the basic one, right? Watashi wa nihon ni something desu. So, watashi wa is the same part. Nihon means Japan. And then, oh, different particle, but that's okay. So, Nihon is a destination to go. So, when you say to go, you need a different particle, ni. This is a direction particle. So, the missing part is to go. To go is ikimasu in Japanese. So, ikimasu is from here, this one. 
So get rid of mass and add tie. So you get ikitai desu. So I want to go to Japan would be watashi wa nihon ni ikitai desu. The last part, last one is I want to go in hot spring. Watashi wa onsen ni something desu. So, watashi wa is the same part, I. And onsen means hot spring. Because Japan has lots of mountains,、um, it also has lots of hot springs. So, you can find the best one in Japan. So, ni is the same particle as the previous one, the direction particle ni. And the missing part is go in or enter. Go in or enter is hairimas in Japanese. So, can you find hairimas in Japanese here? Yes, this one. So get rid of mass, the same rule, and get tight. So you get. Hairitai desu. Watashi wa onsen ni hairitai desu. That's all for today. How was the lesson? I hope you enjoyed this lesson and that you can express what you want. In Japanese. Do you have any question? If you have any questions, please leave the comment below. And if you want to learn Japanese more, please visit JapanesePod11.com and get a free lifetime account. Ciao, Mata! See you again! Hi! Welcome to Introduction to Japanese. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by. Hi everyone, I'm Risa. In this lesson, you'll learn the basics of Japanese grammar. Word order refers to the order in which words are structured to form a sentence in a given language. Consider the English sentence, I ate an apple. But first, let's remove the article an here for simplicity, so we're just left with, I ate apple. The basic word order for English is subject, verb, object, or SVO for short. If we break down the English sentence, I ate apple, we can see that the subject I is presented first, followed by the verb ate, and then finally the object apple is positioned last. This is the basic word order for sentences in English. Now, let's compare the same sentence, I ate an apple, in Japanese. Watashi ga ringo o tabemashita. Like before, let's remove the particles to keep it simple. So we're just left with the words. If we break down the Japanese sentence, we get the subject, watashi, meaning I. Then comes the object, lingo, meaning apple. And finally, we have the verb, tabemashita, meaning ate. The word order for Japanese then is subject, object, verb, or SOV for short. In both languages, the subject is presented first. In English, though, it's followed by the verb and then the object. Compared to the object being first and the verb last in Japanese. The same sentence in Japanese is essentially I apple ate, subject first, then object, and verb last, SOV. This is the basic word order for sentences in Japanese. Okay, let's move on to the next section. English is what is called a subject prominent language. This simply means that the subject is slightly more important than other components in the sentence. It's the key piece of information other components in the sentence relate to. Who is doing the action is slightly more important than what is being done or which object it's being done to in English. If we had to slowly remove pieces of information from a sentence while trying to keep its essence intact, logically we would do so in order of least important to most important. If we were to omit the subject, we would get ate an apple, which sounds strange. On the other hand, if we were to omit the object instead, the sentence would become I ate. Even though in each instance we omitted a piece of information, the reason I ate sounds less strange is because we've yet to break any grammatical rules, and so there's still potential for the sentence fragment to become a complete sentence and to become grammatically correct. Since the latter is logical, this indicates that the subject is more important than the object in English. The same would have been true if we had omitted the verb. Since the subject is the integral component in the sentence, this makes English a subject prominent language. Japanese, on the other hand, is a topic prominent language. Unlike English, the focus of each Japanese sentence is the topic, not the subject. 
Essentially, the eight an apple portion, Lingo wo tabemashita, is the main focus of the sentence, where I is deemed less important and can be omitted. In fact, if it's obvious what the subject is, or if it's already been established, it's quite normal to omit the subject from the conversation altogether in Japanese. Let's look at this aspect in a bit more detail. More often than not, if you wanted to say, I ate an apple in Japanese, you would not say, Watashi ga lingo wo tabemashita. Instead, you would more likely say, Apple ate in Japanese. Lingo wo tabemashita. Since Japanese is a topic prominent language, the information to be shared is the act of eating the apple. Less important is the subject, which is omitted altogether. Most Japanese sentences are constructed and spoken like this in real life. In most situations, such as a one on one conversation, it's clear that the person who's speaking is the subject. In cases where it's obvious who or what the subject is, it's almost guaranteed that the subject will be omitted. And so you're left with. Lingo wo tabemashita. On the other hand, when it's unclear who or what the subject is, or if you wanted to place emphasis on the subject, like if you wanted to declare from a group of people that it was you who ate the apple, then you would include the subject. Watashi ga lingo wo tabemashita. But more often than not, most sentences spoken in daily Japanese conversation can be spoken without including the subject at all, particularly if that subject is you. Hako wo akemashita. Densha de kaerimashita. Knowing this, we can easily express any simple action in Japanese using just the object and the verb. Try to create the sentence, I ate a hot dog, from these sets of words. Tabemashita. Hotdogu. Wo. Okay, got it? The object goes first, so let's put hot dog here. And the verb goes last, so let's put ate at the end. Finally, we connect them using the appropriate particle. And that's it. Hotdogu wo tabemashita. Which means, I ate a hot dog in Japanese. Hotdogu wo tabemashita. You can create any basic sentence like this in Japanese if you simply know the word for the object and the verb in Japanese. Well done! Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. In this lesson, you learned that Japanese sentences are formed using a subject object verb, or SOV, word order. The most important aspect of Japanese sentences is not the subject of the sentence, but the topic. Most sentences spoken in Japanese will not actually contain a subject, especially if that subject is obvious, like when it's yourself, the speaker. And lastly, you can create basic sentences in Japanese by putting the object first and the verb last. We've covered only the very basics of Japanese grammar. If you're interested in learning more, check out our Learn Basic Japanese video series. In that course, we teach you useful phrases while covering the fundamentals of Japanese grammar. Bye! Bye! Want to speak real Japanese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at JapanesePod101.com. Hi everyone, I'm Motoko. Today I'm talking about family members. Do you have any brothers or sisters, or do you have grandmothers and grandfathers? Today I'm going to talk about, talking about the vocabulary relating to family members. And after this video, I hope you can introduce your,、uh, your family in Japanese. So let's go! So imagine you were this panda. Okay, this panda. So it says, Watashi means I. And then here is your sisters and brothers. So in Japanese, we have older brothers, sisters, and then younger brothers, sisters. So here is Ani, older brothers, older brother, Ane, older sister, and Ototo, younger brother, and then Imoto, younger sister. And go up to the here, and then here you have pa your parents. Father is Chichi and mother is haha. And go up, and then each your father and mother would have parents. So here, sofu means grandfather, and then sobo means grandmother. And then here, mother's side is the same. Sofu means grandfather, and then sobo means grandmother. So please note that these family terms are only used for your own family. So, when you were talking about your own family, you can use these、um, words.
but for someone else's family, you need to use different term. So please be careful. So today I prepare some sample sentences. So let's have a look. And let me read through whole the paragraph first. Chichi to, haha to, sobo to, oto to to, imoto ga imas. Sobo wa kyuju hasai des. Chichi to, haha wa tokyo ni imas. Oto to wa isha des. This is about my family. Can you get any family members in this paragraph? So first, you would notice chichi and haha and maybe sobo. So do you remember? Chichi means father and haha means mother. And sobo means grandmother. And here, ototo and imoto. Do you remember ototo and imoto? So, ototo is younger brother and imoto is younger sister. So, what family member do I have? Please guess. The answer is I have father, mother, grandmother, younger brother and younger sister. So, move on to the next sentence. Here, you would find the same word, sobo. So this sentence is talking about my grandmother. Sobo wa 98 desu. Sobo means grandmother. Wa is a topic marine particle. 98 means 98. And sai is a counter for age. And this means it's am and are. The next sentence. Chichi to haha wa Tokyo ni imasu. Can you find the family terms in this sentence? Chichi and haha. Did you notice that Tokyo meaning Tokyo? So this sentence is Chichi, father, to, um, connecting particle and, haha, mother, and then wa, topic marine particle, Tokyo, the name of city, Tokyo, ni, location particle, ni. And imas is um or to exist. And the last sentence, ototo wa isha desu. Can you find ototo here, meaning younger brother? So ototo younger brother wa topic marking particle isha. Do you know this now, meaning medical doctor? This is. So my brother is a medical doctor. In part two, I'm talking about someone's family. We went through how to introduce my own family. And in part two, we will talk about someone else's family. So please note that these words are only used for someone's family, not your own family, OK? So imagine Yuka is here, cute panda. And then she has older brothers, sisters, younger brother and sister and then father and mother and then grandfathers and then grandmothers. Older brother is Ongi-san. Note this long sound, Ongi-san. And older sister is Onesan. Note here, long sound, Onesan. And younger brother, Ototo-san. This also has long sound here, Ototo-san. And younger sister, Imoto-san. This also has long sound here, Imoto-san. And go up, and here, father, Oto-san. This also has long sound here, Oto-san. And mother, Oka-san. Long sound here, Oka-san. And go up, father's side, grandfather, Oji-san. Note this long sound, Oji-san. And grandmother, Oba-san. Note this long sound, Oba-san, and mother's side, the same word, grandfather, Oji-san, and grandmother, Oba-san. And in part two as well, I prepare some sample sentences here. So let me read through the whole paragraph. 
ゆかさんの家族に会いましたお父さんとお母さんと弟さんがいますゆかさんのお父さんは60歳ですゆかさんの弟さんは名古屋にいます Can you get family terms here? So first line says ゆかさんのゆかず家族に family 会いました I met Here you would find family term お父さん means father and to and お母さん mother と connecting particle 弟さん younger brother not older brother younger brother が subject particle and います exist or she has and the third sentence ゆかさんのゆかずお父さん、ファーザーはトピックマリンパリコ60歳です。60 years old。And the last sentence。ゆかさんのゆかず。弟さんは means younger brother。名古屋に。This is the name of city in Japan。名古屋に。Location パリコ。います。Exist or live in。How was the lesson? I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you have any questions, please leave the comment below. If you want to learn more Japanese, please visit JapanesePod11.com and get free lifetime account. Thanks for watching. じゃあまたね。バイ Hi everyone, Hiroko here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher where I'll answer some of your most common Japanese questions. The question for this lesson is Should I use o or go as an honorific prefix? You have probably seen words like okane, go jusho, and learned that o and go are both honorific prefixes to indicate a high politeness level. However, you may be not sure about when you should use o and when you should use go. So, what's going on here? Firstly, I have to explain wago and kango. Wago refers to original Japanese words, and kango are Japanese words of Chinese origin. Do you remember the kun and on readings from the previous lesson? Basically, original Japanese words or wago are read in kun reading, and Chinese origin words or kango are read in on reading. Now, let's get back to today's topic o and go. Basically, o is used in wago or original Japanese words. For example, Ochi meaning house, omizu meaning water, okane meaning money. Also, it's common to use o to refer to your family members. Otousan, okasan, onesan, onisan, and so on. On the other hand, go is used with kango or Chinese origin words. They are usually compounds made up of two kanji. For example, go kazoku, which means family, go ryoshin, Parents and go kyodai, siblings. However, there are some exceptions such as ojikan, odenwa, and oryori. They are kango, but they take o. I recommend you only worry about the exceptions after you get used to the basic rule. Here's one more example. Let's think about namae and shime. They both mean name. Is namae kango o wago? Na and mae are both kun readings, so namae is wago. Even though it's compound of two kanji. So, o must be chosen. How about shime? Shi and mei are own readings, aren't they? Therefore, shime is kango or Chinese origin word and it takes go before it. I hope this makes sense to you. Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I will try to answer them. Mata ne! Welcome to Learn Japanese Grammar, Absolute Beginner. In this video series, you'll learn basic Japanese grammar patterns and phrases through easy to follow audio and visual cues. Here's what we'll cover in this lesson. Ready? Let's get started. Hajimemashite. 
はじめまして。はじめまして。Can we hear it a little bit slower? はじめまして。Great. And one more time at natural speed. はじめまして。And this means nice to meet you. Right. You can use this with anyone you meet for the first time. Right. And that would be the first thing you say. はじめまして。はじめまして。はじめまして。私は香りです。In this lesson, you'll learn a very important sentence pattern. Your first sentence pattern in Japanese. Yes. Okay, so the pattern is A is B. That is the meaning in English. For example, I am Jessie. You are Naomi. She is Jennifer. We have A, which is the item being talked about, and then we have B, which is what we identify it as. So in Japanese, how would we say A is B? A wa B des. One more time. A wa B des. Let's break it down. So we have A followed by wa, and then B followed by des. Okay, so the pattern one more time. A wa B des. So where we have A and B, we can start inserting different words to make sentences. Yes. Watashi wa kaori des. Watashi means I, and kaori is her name, kaori. So we just put both of those into the A is B structure. A wa B des. And we get Watashi wa kaori des. I am kaori, or my name is kaori. You can leave off watashi wa and simply say your name plus des. So, for example, if your name is Ken, you can say either watashi wa ken des or simply ken des to say I'm Ken. Okay, so up until now we've been using names to complete this e wa b des pattern, but we can insert other nouns, right? Yes. For example, in place of b, you can also say your job. 私はパイロットです。Which means, I am a pilot. Can we hear the same phrase a little more slowly? 私はパイロットです。And once again at natural speed. 私はパイロットです。Okay, great. 私は香りです。Here's what we'll cover in this lesson. Ready? Let's get started. これは水ですか In this lesson, you'll learn how to make a question. Which is very easy. Yes, you'll be surprised. <laughs> you learned how to make an A is B sentence. A は B です That's right. For example, これは水ですこれ is this and 水 is water. So, all together, this means, this is water. これは水です。So, this is just a regular statement. You're just stating a fact, right? Right. Now, what if we want to ask a question? Say you have a glass of clear liquid in front of you and you want to know, is this water? For all you know, it could be 7up or something else. Well, to turn a statement into a question, add ka to the end. Just one sound, ka. Let's try it. So, the sentence, これは水です。becomes これは水ですかこれは水ですか Is this water? So sitting in front of you is a plate of something that looks like cookies.、Mm. If you know they are sweets, you can say これはお菓子です。But say, for example, if you don't know what they are and want to ask if they are sweets, you can say これはお菓子ですか Are these sweets? Remember, All you need to do is add か to a statement to make it a question. That's it. これは水ですか？はい、そうです。はい、そうです。What's the first word? はい、yes. And? そうです。Which literally means? It is so. That's right. Hey, that, that's an easy word to remember. It is so, so, 
This. That's one word that is probably the, the word you use the most. Hi, so this. Hi, so this. いいえ、違います。いいえ、違います。いいえ、means no. And 違います means that's wrong? Right. 違います also means no.、Mm. If you were to translate it into English. But really, literally, it means that is different. Ah,、uh, yeah. Or that is wrong. It's different. That's not the case. So basically, it's like saying no, someone is wrong about something, or, or like a proposed option or something is incorrect, and it's the opposite. Let's give an example. Naomi Sensei. Hi. Sore wa diamond desu ka? Kore? Iye, chigaimasu. Naomi Sensei, is that a diamond? No, it's not. You see, it's really no, but it's basically that's different. It's different. It's not a diamond. It's something else. It's something different. Iye, chigaimasu. Here's what we'll cover in this lesson. Ready? Let's get started. Kore, sore, are. In this lesson, we're looking at koso ado words. So, how do we explain what they are then? Well, koso ado words are words that indicate what you're talking about. In Japanese, there are three main categories this, that, And that over there, and one category for questions. So this is kore, and that is sore. So when it comes to koso ado words, remember that words that start with ko indicate something or someone close by. Kore, this. Words that start with so indicate something or someone a little further away. Sore, that. There are some others though, too, aren't there? Yes, like are. Are also means that. But it's used to refer to something far away from both the speaker and the listener. So it's over there. Right. And dore. Now, koso ado words that start with do are always the question words. They're、always. like WH words in English. So dore means which or which one. Let's go over those koso ado words again. Kore. This one. Sore. That one near you. Are. That one over there. Dore. Which one? Kore, sore, are. Kore wa nan desu ka? Kore wa nan desu ka? Alright, let's break that down. First word is Kore. This. Wa. The topic marking particle. Nan. What. This. The copula. Ka. The question marking particle. これは何ですか What is this? Right. All right, we have this, but what if I wanted to talk about that? You mean that one over there? I mean that thing that's right there within your reach. That would be sore for you. Sore means that, close to the person you're speaking to. And how about that thing that's way over there? Are. So, you're not sure if what I'm holding in my hand now is medicine, so you would ask me. Sore wa Is that medicine? And then I would say, Hai, kore wa kusuri desu. Which means, yes, this is medicine. So, Naomi sensei, what is this? Kore wa nan desu ka? And what is that? The one right in front of you. Sore wa nan desu ka? And what is that one over there? Are wa nan desu ka? Kore wa nan desu ka? Here's what we'll cover in this lesson. Ready? Let's get started. What time is it? Let's break it down. Ima. Now. Nanji. What time? This. Copula. Ka. The question marker. Ima nanji desu ka? What time is it now? I think this is the most common expression to ask the time. That's right. And this is pretty formal in the sense that you say ima at the beginning, you say、oh. now. Because when you ask the time, you usually mean right now, right? So you can omit ima 
and it'll still have the same, the same meaning. What time is it? Same thing, right? Right. And of course, in a casual situation, you can drop deska and say, nanji. And you know, it's funny. In that case, personally, from personal experience, when you're speaking casually, you tend to add the ima at the beginning.、Mm. So it would become, ima nanji. Right. And that's the phrase you hear the most, at least when you're speaking casually. Ima nanji desu ka? Yoji desu. Let's do the time. Let's learn all of the hours. All right, so what's one o'clock? Ichi ji. Two o'clock? Ni ji. Three o'clock? San ji. Four o'clock? Yo ji. Five o'clock? Go ji. Six o'clock? Roku ji. Seven o'clock? Shichi ji. Or nana ji. Eight o'clock? Hachi ji. Nine o'clock? Ku ji. Ten o'clock? Ju ji. Eleven o'clock? Ju ichi ji. Twelve o'clock? Ju ni ji. There we go. Now you can count all of the hours. But、uh, you have to be careful about four o'clock, nine o'clock, and seven o'clock. The pronunciation is a bit irregular. Irregular? Okay, so let's go over them again. What's four o'clock? Yo ji. Okay, I see what you're saying. So normally the number four is. Yong. But when it's four o'clock, it becomes. Yo ji. I see. So the yon becomes yo. And you can't say shi ji either. Ah, that's right, because another way of saying four is shi, right?、Mm-hmm. And you can't say shi ji. Doesn't make any sense. No one will know what time you're talking about. So, what's the problem with seven o'clock? I think people usually say shi ji in the conversation, but at the train station or airport, you might hear nana ji. Nine o'clock. Kuji. It's not kuji. Ah, nine is normally q. Q. But nine o'clock? Kuji. It becomes ku. Kuji. All right, so let's practice some polite conversation. What time is it now? Ima, nanji desu ka? It's four o'clock. Yoji desu. And in a casual situation? What time is it? Ima, nanji? It's four o'clock. Yoji. Yoji desu. Here's what we'll cover in this lesson. Ready? Let's get started. Toile wa doko desu ka? So, what's our grammar point today? Kyo wa asking the location. Ryugak Senta wa doko desu ka? Where is the study abroad office? Let's break it down. Ryugak Senta. Study abroad office. Wa. Topic marking particle. Doko. Where. Des. The copula. Ka. The question marking particle. Ryugak Senta wa doko desu ka? Where's the study abroad office? So, Naomi sensei, where's the bathroom?、Uh, do you want me to say it in Japanese? <laughs> okay. Toile wa doko desu ka? Where's the bathroom? Toile is bathroom. All right, that's fine, Naomi sensei, but sometimes it's you're in the dark, right? You need to find out what the lights are, or else you're going to stay in the dark. Ah, light in Japanese is denki. Denki. It also means electricity, right?、Mm-hmm. So, Naomi sensei, where are the lights? Denki wa doko desu ka? Where are the lights? But, you know, before we turn the lights on, we need to get into the room. <laughs> so, But, you know, I, I don't have the key. Do you know where it is? Where's the key? Kagi is key. Kagi. Kagi wa doko desu ka? Where's the key? Toile wa doko desu ka? Watashi wa koko desu. In this lesson, we'll be looking at kosoado words. Kosoado words are words that indicate what you are talking about. Words like this and that are some examples. Now, the reason we call them kosoado words is because they all start with either ko, so, a, or do.、Mm. This prefix tells us the location or the object's distance relative to the speaker. The first one is ko. The prefix ko means near the speaker. The next one is so. 
The prefix so means close to the listener, but a bit far from the speaker. The next one is a. The prefix a means at a distance from the speaker and the listener. And the last one is do. Now, this one doesn't refer to a location, but instead is used for question words. Remember these prefixes and their meanings. Now, let's move on to the kosalado words that describe places. The word for here is koko, there, soko, over there. This word talks about a farther distance from both the speaker and the listener. Asoko, where, doko. Good. Now, let's hear an example. Watashi wa koko desu. This means I'm here. Watashi wa koko desu. Want to speak real Japanese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at JapanesePod101.com. Here's what we'll cover in this lesson. Ready? Let's get started. Sumimasen. Okay, in this lesson, you'll learn how to say, excuse me, and I'm sorry. The best part is, you only have to learn one phrase for both. That's right. There is one phrase that covers both of these meanings. That makes it easy. And that word is Naomi. Sumimasen. Sumimasen. One time slowly. Sumimasen. And one more time regular speed. Sumimasen. So this sumimasen has two meanings. Excuse me and I'm sorry. So the first meaning of sumimasen, excuse me, is used to get the attention of somebody. So that means you can use it to call out to a stranger or a waiter at a restaurant, things like that. Ano, sumimasen. Um, excuse me, like that. So that's the first meaning of sumimasen. The second meaning, again, is I'm sorry. Ah, sumimasen. Which is, oh, I'm sorry. This is really useful. If you make some kind of mistake, it can all be handled with sumimasen. Please remember this phrase. Sumimasen. Mizu, onegaishimasu. In this lesson, you'll learn how to ask for something in Japanese. There's one phrase you'll learn for that in this lesson. Onegaishimasu. On its own, you can think of it as meaning please. Yes, as in menu please, water please, and so on. Okay, so Naomi, what's the formation? Very simple. Just say the item you want and add onegaishimasu. So that's item plus onegaishimasu. Exactly. Menu, onegaishimasu. Literally, menu please. In more natural English, we'd say, can I get a menu? And the next one? Mizu, onegaishimasu. Can I get some water? Now, a menu and water are both physical objects, so you can use this onegaishimasu for actual tangible things, but you can also use it for not so tangible things. Ah, like a service. Right. Chumon, onegaishimasu. Chumon is order, and onegaishimasu is like please. So literally, it's like saying order please. You may think it means something like, can I have my order please? But what it really means is, can you take my order please? So you're asking them to do something. Yes, quite handy, this onegaishimasu. Mizu, onegaishimasu. Here's what we'll cover in this lesson. Ready? Let's get started. Larija arimasen. Larija arimasen. I am not Larry. All right. What's the key point here? Ja arimasen, the negative form of des. So the negative of des is de wa arimasen, which is the first way to say a negative form. There's three ways. What's the second way, Nami Sensei? Ja arimasen. And all we did here was get that dewa from dewa arimasen and shorten it into ja. And what's the third way? Ja nai desu. And this is no less polite. It's also polite, but you just got the arimasen and you turned it into nai. 
And、uh, nai is the casual version of arimasen, but we attach des at the end, so it remains polite. So you could use it to anybody. All right. And all of these expressions are polite. Are there any real differences in the way that you use them, Naomi Sensei? I would say dewa arimasen is the most polite expression. Do you ever you find yourself using it? In speaking, not much. How about in writing? Writing, I use it a lot. Okay, Naomi Sensei, so let's be a little negative here. Hi. Translate all my sentences into negative. Watashi wa lori des. Watashi wa lori dewa arimasen. Watashi wa lori des. Watashi wa lori ja arimasen. Watashi wa lori des. Watashi wa lori ja nai des. And those are three ways of saying I'm not Dori in the same level of politeness. Lari ja arimasen. Udon wa 300 yen de shita. Let's have a look at noun sentences and putting them in their polite past form. Udon wa 300 yen de shita. This sentence, the udon was 300 yen, is、um, a noun sentence and it's in the past form, the polite past form. So if we were just going to say the udon is 300 yen, it would be udon wa 300 yen des. Okay, so putting it in the past tense, what changes is the des on the end. It becomes deshita. This is pretty simple. So for example, if we were going to say、um, one dollar is 100 yen, we would say ichi doru wa 100 yen des. But、uh, was there a time, I think, when one dollar was worth a lot more yen? Hai, 360 yen ka na? 360 yen. Okay, so how would we say the dollar was worth 360 yen? Was being past tense. Ichi doru wa 360 yen de shita. Okay, so you can hear there that the des is becoming de shita to indicate past tense, and this is polite past tense. All right, let's look at just a couple more noun sentences in the polite past form. Kennedy wa America jin deshita. Kennedy,、uh, you mean JFK? Yeah, yeah. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, so、uh, JFK was an American. Hi. Since he has already passed away, I used deshita. Okay, so if you were talking about President Bush, you would say. Bush wa America jin des. So I think you probably get the picture now. It's just the difference between des and deshita. That's all that changes in the sentence if you're indicating non past or past. Because non past is des and past is deshita. うどんは300円でした。Here's what we'll cover in this lesson. Ready? Let's get started. スーパーがあります。In this lesson, you'll learn how to say that something exists, as in, there is a blank, and also how to say that you have something. The same pattern is used for both of these meanings. Yes, and that pattern is. A ga arimas. A ga arimas. So let's take a look at the first meaning, talking about something existing. When we say it this way, it sounds really deep, but <laughs> <laughs> what are we really trying to say? Well, it's like saying there is a da 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 in English, like there's a supermarket, or there's a convenience store, there's a party, things like that. How about. There's a person. Nope. This pattern is used for inanimate objects only. Got it. So, objects, things, places, anything that's not alive, basically. Right. So, again, the pattern is. A ga arimas. Let's hear some examples. How about the ones that we just gave in English? Okay. Supermarket is supa in Japanese. So, to say there's a supermarket, we'd say supa ga arimas. スーパー、プラスがあります。スーパーがあります。Right. Convenience store is コンビニ。So to say, there's a convenience store, we'd say コンビニがあります。コンビニ、プラスがあります。コンビニがあります。That's it. Okay, so like we said earlier, this があります has another meaning. Yes. And that's the meaning of to have. As in, I have, you have, he has, etc. So to say that you have something, the structure is item plus ga arimas, just like before. Okay, how about saying you have time? 
time is 時間 So to say, I have time, you'd say, 時間があります時間 plus があります時間があります Now you know how to use がありますと talk about the existence of inanimate objects and having something. スーパーがあります。兄弟がいますか In this lesson, you'll learn how to talk about the existence of animate objects, that is, people and animals. If you remember, we learned object がありますと talk about the existence of an inanimate object and also to talk about having something. This time, what's our structure? Person or animal plus がいますがいます Remember that this can only be used with living things, people or animals. Right. So, Jesse, can you tell us when we'd use this structure? Well, first, you can use it to talk about someone being physically present. Yes, as in, Taylor is here or the teacher is here. Right. And that would be covered by person plus がいます Right. And how else? You can also use it to talk about having family members, as in, I have a brother, I have a sister, etc. Yes. Family member plus がいます Let's hear some examples. What's the word for siblings, Naomi? 兄弟兄弟 Brothers and sisters. So when someone asks you if you have brothers or sisters, they will ask, Naomi? 兄弟がいますか兄弟がいますか Do you have any brothers or sisters? Remember that the ka at the end makes it a question. 兄弟がいますか Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.